We all want to have a healthy and sustainable lifestyle, right? I know that's not easy, but 8 billion people live on Earth and we all need to eat and preserve our beautiful planet. Is it even possible to do both? Yes, using tech. And smart farming is our topic on Shift today. There is no future without sustainable farming. To help farmers grow more food with less chemicals, there are many startups that use data analysis to examine everything, from soil conditions to climate changes to the most efficient ways to use fertilizer. So far, however, this data is not equally accessible to everyone. For instance, when it comes to data from space. Satellites are rarely gathering info from sub-Saharan Africa. A Kenyan startup wants to change this using artificial intelligence. This farmer from Nyeri, Kenya, has been working with satellite images to increase his crop yield. He is supported by a startup specializing in eco-friendly technology from the capital Nairobi. Their goal? Farmers should have access to more data on the soil, the weather and future changes to the climate. Using this data, we're able to, to create models. And these models will help us you know, to understand what is happening at the, at the farm at any point in time. For farmers like Martin Waniki, climate change is making it increasingly difficult to tell when to start sowing. His hopes now rest on data from the software Amini, which could help him to be more efficient. When we have enough data about the weather, we will know if it, the rain is going to come and it will not last long, it will be short rains, we will do, uh, we do potatoes and those three months pot, uh, crops. If it is going to be wrong rains, then we will know we are going to do maize, or those plants that go for a longer period. Amini gathers weather and soil data from satellites in space and analyzes this using AI. The company is based in Nairobi. Since most satellites are not directed towards gathering data from Africa, getting high quality and reliable data is challenging. Amini founder Kate Kellett wants to change this. We wanted to make sure that countries in the global south were also equipped with the same platforms that the Global North have been able to get access to. And if the West or the Global North has accelerated and has created the world that we see today, full of technology, Africa hasn't been able to capture that revolution because of the lack of high quality and accessible data. Kate Kellett isn't tackling this challenge alone. She wants to fundamentally change how data is gathered across Africa and is thus cooperating with academic research institutes in Kenya that use machine learning to protect the climate. Ultimately, what we're building at Amini is all to leave a legacy to the African continent. So we're hoping that as we continue to work with the students and build capacity within the continent, they come and take over and bring that, that, um, that mission and that vision a hundred times further um, that, uh, that we will be able to do it today. In less than five years, Amini has already raised more than two million dollars. Kate Kellett wants to use the satellite data to improve Amini's machine learning system. The data can provide more information on the impact of climate change and thus help the farmers on the ground. Here, small-scale farmers are especially important to her. When I see people who say, well, these farms actually don't have an impact, they have an impact. When you put 600 millions of them together, they feed the entire planet and that's very powerful and that's why we should care about these farms. Supporting individual farmers that's also important. Small farms produce around 35% of the world's food, despite using just 12% of all agricultural land. That means they are essential for our nutrition. One project that supports small farmers is in northern Cameroon. A classroom in the north of Cameroon. In this course, farmers use VR headsets to enter virtual fields and learn how to keep their real-world cotton plants pest-free. This type of training lets farmers practice new methods. By being able to try them out, they understand the challenges better and can adapt accordingly. Halawachi Halahoki learned how to grow cotton from his parents. Now he'd like to try new methods and expand his skill set. 
The VR headset lets him train on a virtual cotton field. Here, he can zoom closer to the plants in order to spot potential pest infestation that could harm the plants. Another valuable lesson from the course is that spiders, who eat caterpillars, can be helpful for pest control. It feels like you're inside the video on the fields and can observe what's happening. It's been really helpful for us, for me. In this virtual world, the farmers also learn how to produce biological pesticide spray by mixing ground neem seeds with water, vegetable oil and a bit of detergent. Not only is it more eco-friendly and less harmful to humans than chemical pesticides, but it's also much cheaper. All the techniques taught in VR precisely resemble real-life situations. Immersive learning is also cheaper than regular training, as there are no costs for transport and accommodation. The Cameroonian cotton export company Sode Coton also profits from well-trained farmers. You can have the right equipment, but without appropriate training, you won't be able to produce good cotton. This education helps the farmers to improve their techniques and produce high-quality cotton. In order to be equipped for future challenges and to produce higher yields on the cotton fields, more and more farmers in Cameroon want to participate in the virtual training courses. From peanut butter to frozen pizza, one product that's in almost everything is palm oil. It has a great shelf life and can withstand being heated, but it's also very controversial. Forests have been cut down for palm oil plantations, which threatens animal species and the air we breathe. Now, that doesn't sound very eco-friendly, does it? But palm oil actually requires much less deforested area than rapeseed or soy. It just needs to be sustainable. How can we check? With a new app from Indonesia, for example. Indonesia is by far the largest palm oil producer in the world. More than 16 million people here work as farmers, oil mill operators, traders and in the food industry. It's a long supply chain and for true sustainability, every step needs to be vetted. Manfred Bora from Switzerland co-founded Coltiva to this end. He always knew that... We can't just build a software for a farmer or a software for a trader. It has to be a holistic end-to-end -end system where we deliver a platform which helps agri-input suppliers, farmers and the off-takers, the mills, up to the brands. Verifying the data is key. To date, Coltiva has registered more than 120,000 smallholder palm oil plantations in Indonesia alone. And each farmer has been interviewed by Coltiva staff. So we have verification that the farm is not in protected forests, not involved in deforestation over the past 10 years, and that they do not exploit children and their labor on their farm. Today, Coltiva has become a global company with 800 employees. Its mission is to enable and ensure traceability at every stage of production, processing and sales. As more and more companies are looking to making their supply chains more transparent. Often a contract starts with a multinational company, a brand, coming to us, OK, please help us to map our supply chain. The Jakarta-based tech company diversified its portfolio. These days, it doesn't just cover palm oil supply chains, but also the more than one million producers of over 50 different raw materials from across the globe who have also signed up. There are many apps for cattle breeders. Farmers can use these to access data on their livestock on their smartphones. DigiCow also has a chat function where they can chat directly with veterinarians. Tech connects people. Also in Latin America, where an app helps farmers sell their products by connecting them directly with customers so they can order produce straight from the farmers. Many farms in Colombia are located in remote areas. So transporting produce can be difficult and small farmers don't have as many options for selling their crops, which makes it harder to earn a fair and stable income. 
Yuli Galindo and Camilo Ramos want to change this with their platform Siembra Co. When we saw all the productive barriers and challenges that small scale farmers face it, we started to develop a solution, an integral solution for the farmers. Uh, and in that moment, we think about virtual planting in which we can connect farmers and customers before planting. Customers can order produce directly from the farmers and can now also choose how many plants should be grown for them. The crops can be delivered to them, but they can also be sold or donated. But the startup isn't stopping at being a direct marketer. 2,600 small-scale farming families live in Colombia and Guatemala. Siembraco would like to see them profit from information and insights available on the platform. We use AI in different areas. Uh, the most important are logistics. We use a platform that uses AI to do all the deliveries in the best way. And we also use AI to give support to our farmers. I mean, we process the satellite image through AI platform and thus our technical support can give information to the farmers. More data can hopefully lead to better crops. These days, Siembra Co. also delivers to restaurant chains and companies. The aim is to make these markets more accessible to small-scale farmers too. Now is the moment to implement technology in agriculture because we need to bring opportunities to the field to motivate new generations working in the crops. It's impressive how many support tools are available for farmers these days. In the end, there is no planet B, right? So we have to find ways to grow food and protect our planet. By changing our diets at least a little and supporting these farming projects, each one of us can contribute to a healthier, more sustainable future. That's all from me. Thanks and see you next time.